When you first set up a Xero account, you're automatically taken through to some of the settings, but these can be amended at any point from the main dashboard. From the Settings tab, select General Settings. In this video, I'm going to show you Organisation Settings and Financial Settings. So under Organisation Settings, This is where you can enter all the basic information about your company. So you can put in the display name that you want showing on Xero and also your actual legal trading name. You can upload your logo and you can put in your organization type. That's whether you're a limited company or a sole trader, etc. If you are a limited company, you need to put in your registration number in here, not your VAT number, your registration number. And then you can put in your postal address, your physical address, your telephone, email, website, etc. And there's some more contact fields that you can fill in if you wish to. And always remember to save. So if we go back to the settings and general settings, I'll now show you the financial settings. So here we need to put in our financial year end. So we just select the day and the month. The Xero uses this day and month to calculate the year to date balances in all the reports. Then we can enter our VAT scheme. So you can enter whether you're on a cash or an accrual scheme. If you, if you don't know, then you can ask your accountant. If you are on a flat rate scheme, you can choose whether you're a cash or an accrual flat, flat rate scheme. You do have a percentage on a flat rate scheme, but it's not entered here. It's actually entered on the VAT return. If you're not VAT registered, you just select none. Then if you are VAT registered, select the VAT period and enter your VAT number. If you have a BACS agreement with your bank where you can send a file to your bank and they will make payments from your bank account to your suppliers for you according to the file that you send, then you can put in your service number here. Then we have the lock dates and it does explain here the difference between the lock dates. And although they're called the period lock date and the end of year lock date, they don't have to be used in for those reasons. The period lock date is when only users with the advisor role can edit accounts prior to and inclusive of this date. Whereas the end of year lock date, no users including advisors can edit accounts prior to and inclusive of this date. And you can change the lock dates forward or backwards here. Again, remember to save. 